What's up YouTube? This is JD from Red Barrel Skis, a YouTube channel dedicated to ski and snowboard construction. Coming at you today from my new shop, uh, aka garage. <laughs> Three car garage, but I'm dedicating one lane to nothing but shop, so super excited about that. On the menu for today is ski course. What are they made of? How are they made? Who, what, when, where, why? And uh, it's a pretty deep subject, so let's get into it. All right, where to begin? There's a lot of different properties and characteristics of materials and, you know, physics going on that kind of describe the nature of the core of a ski. Uh, let's start with materials. You have wood and you've got foam. And you have some pretty exotic stuff like honeycomb and ultra advanced materials. Foam is good for mass produced skis because they can inject it into a mold and get exactly repeatable results an endless number of times. It's lightweight. You can select from different types of foams to get different densities and, you know, kind of characterize your properties, open celled, closed celled, you know, how much you want to impregnate it with other materials for different dampening, blah, 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 blah. That's really not the kind of skis I make here. I like wood cores. It's very traditional. It's a great balance of high performance, uh, readily available materials, not expensive tooling. Um, and yeah, Wood cord skis are really bread and butter of the industry. It's good stuff. Well, um, let's see. You don't really just use one piece of wood. Since wood has different properties in different directions, and the ultimate goal of a pair of skis or snowboard is to kind of have like a consistent flex, or you know, when you turn, you want it to feel the same if you're going right or left. You don't want some knot from a branch or some a neat, you know, anomaly inside the wood to create a soft spot on your core. So what we do is laminate a bunch of different wood pieces together to give it a more even, predictable, uniform um, feel. Uh, there's two laminating um, types. There's horizontal lamination and vertical lamination. Horizontal laminates is pretty simply just like plywood. Take a bunch of thin veneers, sandwich them together, glue it up. All the interfaces are horizontal with respect to each other. So there you go, horizontal laminate. And then you've got vertical laminate. That's where you take a bunch of strips of wood or a big block and yada, yada, yada to create uh, a wood core that has vertical interfaces between each adjacent piece of wood. Let's take a deeper dive into a vertically laminated book matched core for a ski. <clears throat> right here is the first basically step in the process. You take four approximately pieces of half inch to three quarter inch uh, pieces of wood and you glue them into a giant block. If you look at this block, I have different thicknesses um, that cater to where ultimately my bindings are gonna go. So right here, this would be the center line of the ski. Uh, I have a thinner piece of wood. That is so that two times this thickness is less than like the closest two screws on my binding. This piece is a little thicker and that's what I attempt to have line up with the binding screws. So this piece right here is the one that I select for binding retention. And then this one's typically kind of like a filler piece of wood. Um, I use like pine, something lightweight. And then this one, depending on the kind of ski I'm trying to make, if I know I'm going to have uh, a need for really heavy duty uh, sidewalls, then I'll make this out of a hardwood. But if I'm just going for like a lightweight ski, I'll usually use a softwood. So it's usually soft, hard, soft, soft. Or soft, hard, soft, hard. Just depends on the kind of ski you're trying to do. I like having 
pieces of wood run from the tip to the tail. That gives you a very consistent flex. If you were to say, cut out a little segment of wood just for the binding, and then have a different type of wood up in the tip and tail, that'd be great. But the curve of your ski might be curved, and then flat, and then curved. And that's just not very even distribution of pressure. So when you're carving down the hill, you just won't have as good of edge hold. Now, that's getting a little bit into the weeds, and if you really want to go with the lightest weight ski possible, say you're building a backcountry ski, and you're going to have some early rise, and you're going to kind of compensate for different, you know, using a different camber for it, you could, you could definitely build, I mean, there's an infinite amount of options you can go with for different types of skis, but in general, I like to have the wood run from the tip to the tail, same woods, soft, hard, soft, soft. That's about it. So you take a big block of wood like this, you run it through your bandsaw. And then you take these slices and you, you basically just you know, flip it from inside out or whatever so that you have the same piece of wood uh, this was the center line of the ski. You know, you got a symmetric wood grain setup. That's what we have here. This is a core blank with symmetric wood grains. Um, and then take this nice piece of wood, run it through the planer a few times, get it extra flat. And cut out your core. This is where I um, used my CNC. This one is the core. I then take a couple of strips of sidewall, glue them to the core. And lastly, run it through my core profiling jig. And there you have it. That's really the 101 on a wood core. Yeah, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.